Welcome back to Mental Math. This integral looks impossible at first glance, but through a clever trick, it's going to collapse into one of the most famous numbers in mathematics. Let's see how. The key insight here is turning the thing we're integrating into an infinite series. Let's focus on what we're integrating. The tricky part is this e to the x minus 1 in the denominator. To massage this into something more useful, we can multiply both top and bottom by e to the negative x. Let's distribute that e to the negative x through the denominator. When we simplify e to the x times e to the negative x cancels to 1. And there we go. This form, with 1 minus e to the negative x in the denominator, is exactly what we need. Here's a formula you might remember. 1 over 1 minus r can be written as an infinite sum of r to the n, where n starts at 0 and goes to infinity. This works as long as the absolute value of r is less than 1. Our expression has exactly this pattern, where r is e to the negative x. And here's why this works. Since we're integrating from 0 to infinity, x is always positive, which means e to the negative x is always between 0 and 1. Perfect. So we can replace that fraction with the series. Let's pull that x e to the negative x inside the sum. Now e to the negative x raised to the n is the same as e to the negative nx. We can combine these exponentials by adding their exponents. And there it is. Our original expression now equals this infinite series. Now let's plug this back into the integral. And here's where something really cool happens. We're now integrating an infinite sum. There's a theorem that says when a series converges nicely enough, you're allowed to swap the integral and the sum. This is the move that cracks the whole problem open. After swapping, we have a sum of integrals. Each one is way simpler than what we started with. We can handle this integral using integration by parts. Integration by parts is the technique where you break an integral of a product into simpler pieces using this formula. Let's set u equal to x and dv equal to e to the negative n plus 1 times x dx. Taking the derivative of u gives du, and integrating dv gives v. Applying the integration by parts formula gives us this. Let's look at this first term. As x goes to infinity, the exponential decay completely dominates. So this goes to 0. And at x equals 0, well, x itself is 0. So this term is also 0. So that boundary term is just 0, and we're left with this integral. The constant 1 over n plus 1 can come out front. Integrating the exponential is straightforward. At infinity, the exponential goes to 0. At 0, e to the 0 is 1. So we get 0 minus negative 1 over n plus 1. That gives us 1 over n plus 1 times 1 over n plus 1, which is 1 over n plus 1 squared. All right, let's put this result back into the sum and watch what emerges. Our entire complicated integral has collapsed down to this clean infinite series. Let's see what this looks like. When n is 0, we get 1. When n is 1, we get 1 over 4. When n is 2, we get 1 over 9. And so on. This is the sum of 1 over the square of each positive integer. To write this in standard form, let's do a quick index shift. Set k equal to n plus 1. And there it is. This is the Basel problem, famously solved by Euler in 1734. The sum equals the Riemann zeta function at 2, which has this beautiful closed form, pi squared over 6. Let's take a moment to visualize what we just computed. Here's what the function looks like, starting at x equals 0. It starts close to 1 and then drops off exponentially fast. The integral from 0 to infinity is the total area under this curve. What we've proven is that this area, which seems like it should be some messy number, is actually exactly pi squared over 6. Beautiful.
let's step back and appreciate what just happened. We took this integral that looked impossible, turned it into an infinite series, evaluated each piece, and landed on one of the most famous results in all of mathematics. It's a beautiful example of how different areas of math connect in unexpected ways. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this proof, give it a like and subscribe for more beautiful mathematics. See you next time.